Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, a few subscribers have contacted me for my thoughts on a possible Manny pacquiao rushlin Provodnikov fight. Right? They know that Provodnikov has fought in the past for the welterweight title. He carried the weight well. He barely lost to Timothy Bradley. In fact, his power carried well. He put Timothy Bradley on the canvas in that fight. It's the worst beating Timothy Bradley has had in his boxing career. Right? Bradley, by his own admission, was concussed after the fight, had speech problems after the fight. His family and his trainer were both concerned about his health. So Provodnikov, who right now rules the roost at 140 pounds, is being speculated about in the press as a possible opponent for Pacquiao at 147 pounds. Let me just say, because of some old-fashioned concepts, friendship, and loyalty, in my opinion, this fight will never happen. Understand, both of these guys are trained by Freddie Roach. Richland Provodnikov considers Manny Pacquiao to be a mentor and a friend. Right? Provodnikov feels that Pacquiao gave him a great opportunity in having him as a sparring partner for several camps. And so whatever the money is, whatever the fame is, Provodnikov, out of loyalty to Manny Pacquiao, doesn't want to fight him. Right? Let me just say, you have <clears throat> a lot of the same sentiment, only in a more familial level, right? In terms of Vitaly Klitschko flatly refusing to ever fight his brother Vladimir Klitschko in a heavyweight unification match. Let's talk about the match for a second. I believe this is one of those rare matches where you would have to throw out the CompuBox numbers, right? In my opinion, between these two fighters, Manny Pacquiao is the one who normally has a edge, right? Normally has a competitive advantage because of his hand speed and his awkwardness. Manny Pacquiao is not a by-the-book fighter. He jumps around the ring a lot. You don't quite know what he's doing, right? He's trying to set up a left hand most of the time. But he's less predictable than, let's say, a Juan Manuel Marquez or a Bernard Hopkins. You kind of know that those guys are using certain boxing techniques. With Manny Pacquiao, he seems to be a guy who had an A-plus left hand who became more orthodox, or at least is trying to become more orthodox, after being a world-class fighter. So that lack of predictability is actually an asset for him, right? Go online and look up some of the older interviews for Nacho Beristain, the trainer of Juan Manuel Marquez. You'll see that Beristain used to consider Pacquiao to be what he called a wildcat. In fact, Beristain's interesting because Beristain actually believes that Pacquiao's game has actually suffered because Pacquiao has moved away from being a wildcat, right, totally unpredictable, totally wild, to having a more structured game that's more predictable. 
right? Well, the point is, the typical Pacquiao opponent, in my opinion, is absolutely overwhelmed early in fights, right? The hand speed is blistering. The angles are unconventional, even now, right? The fight style is one that is hard to figure out. The awkwardness is actually a strength, right? It's no different than, in baseball, facing a pitcher who has a weird release point, right? By the time you figure out that release point, the first time you're up, it's strike three. But, if you see the guy enough times, if you have enough at-bats where you can eventually figure out that release point, then, of course, the competitive edge that the awkward pitcher had wears off over time. <coughs> I believe Manny Pacquiao is the kind of guy who a sparring partner like Provotnikov, if he studied hard enough, would be able to solve. Right? I think Provotnikov, by having been at multiple Pacquiao training camps, has probably learned enough about Pacquiao where the advantage Pacquiao would have in the first four or five rounds where he would just simply be too fast and too unpredictable for an unsuspecting opponent. Wouldn't happen were he to fight Pavotnikov. Pavotnikov would see someone he's already been in the ring for dozens of rounds with. As Pacquiao jumps around, Pavotnikov would actually know where Pacquiao's going to be when he's going to throw punches. Provodnikov even probably knows some of the force of Pacquiao's punches. Now, I'm not here to say that sparring is the same as a real fight. Right? I believe there are many guys who approach sparring as an opportunity to work on the weak parts of their game. So you're in the ring with some guy who's practicing some punch he normally doesn't throw, maybe you have the upper hand in that sparring session. But that doesn't mean that that's the guy you would face if you were to actually face him on a real fight night. But when you're dealing with a guy whose game is really built around some awkwardness, who doesn't do things conventionally, then I believe in sparring you can actually figure out how to crack that part of his code. So I actually believe that a Provodnikov Pacquiao fight would be spirited. Right? I would probably play that fight based on whatever the odds were that were offered. I think that fight would be really a bit of a toss-up. Because Provodnikov would already have a read on Pacquiao's movement. Provodnikov would have an idea on the angles. I don't believe Manny Pacquiao is the kind of guy who, quite frankly, would do that well in rematches. Now, before I get a flood of comments on how Pacquiao avenged his loss to Eric Morales and then went on to dominate Eric Morales, right? we'll forget that Eric Morales back then had big-time weight problems and had a lot of wear and tear on the tire, especially after fighting Marco Antonio Barrera multiple times, right? We'll forget all of that. Well, my point is simply this. To the Morales crowd, and I'll concede, Manny Pacquiao looked great in those rematches. But to the Morales crowd, how do you explain the incremental mastery of Manny Pacquiao by Juan Manuel Marquez. It's clear that in the first round of their first fight, Marquez didn't know the angles 
was in the ring with Manny Pacquiao and was overwhelmed. He hits the canvas three times. As I like to say, we don't even have a series between the two. If Joe Cortez doesn't allow the fight to continue after the third knockdown, he easily could have waved it off. In fact, at one point, both Marquez's shoulders are on the canvas, right? From that first round forward, it looked to me like Marquez gradually solved Manny Pacquiao's puzzle. So that by the time we get to the last fight between the two guys, and I know Pacquiao had his moments in that fight, but it was interesting how Marquez had a strategy where he didn't have to move that much. He's setting traps. Let's remember, Pacquiao gets knocked down before he later gets knocked out in the fight. Right? Marquez was landing. My point is, the novelty of Pacquiao's style has already dissipated with regard to Ruslan Povatnikov. Povatnikov would be in the ring with someone he knows. Right? Also, Povatnikov wouldn't suffer from stage fright. He's already been in big fights with people like Timothy Bradley and Mike Alvarado. Right? He would enter the ring and he wouldn't look across the ring and say, my goodness, here's Hall of Famer Manny Pacquiao. Rather, what he would do is he would look across the ring and it'd be a guy he knows he can compete with because he's been in the ring with Pacquiao for multiple camps, right? And so this is that rare case where, quite frankly, if this fight happened, I'd just be playing odds. In my opinion, anything could happen in this fight. Right? I'll agree if it goes to a decision, usually the guy with the faster hand speed and the higher volume. Let's remember, Provodnikov threw less than 700 punches against Timothy Bradley. Typically, if a fight goes the distance, the guy with the higher volume and the faster hands, right? You know, who, who can throw punches and bunches to dazzle judges will likely get the decision. Right, so Manny Pacquiao would have the edge if the fight went the distance. But understand, this would be a fight between two very heavy punchers, two outsized punchers, who know each other. And I'm guessing Provodnikov, more than anyone else, knows that he likely can't match Pacquiao's punch output. So he would know that he would need to close the show to win. So this fight would be explosive at the highest level. Right? Keep in mind too, height wise, the guys actually match up pretty well. So you wouldn't have the height dynamic issues that you had with, let's say, Provodnikov against Mike Alvarado. In other words, these guys would literally be eye to eye. Right? Neither would be able to, you know, just come in low and use a lack of height to their advantage. So some of the strengths of the fighters would literally be out the window and you would have a total war. So to sum up, I don't think the fight will happen. If it did happen, it would be rough and tumble. It would be dramatic. I personally would not expect the fight to go the distance, right? If it went the distance, I would expect Manny Pacquiao to win the fight, right? So just keep in mind a few themes I believe in. Familiarity doesn't help an awkward fighter, right? If a guy's style is hard to duplicate in sparring, that's a big advantage that the guy has going into a fight. Unless, of course, he's fighting a guy who used to spar with him. Right? And so familiarity doesn't help an awkward fighter. Right? Also, you know, sometimes being awkward and unconventional is actually a strength. Don't believe those who say 
there's a right way to be a boxer. Uh, you can only succeed doing things the right way. Don't believe any trainer who tells you that. Because then people like that can't explain Manny Pacquiao's success or Sergio Martinez's success. Let's face it, Sergio Martinez's fight style is very different than the fight styles of most of the people in boxing. Right? So sometimes being a wildcat, in the words of Nacho Beristain, actually makes you better, right? It is possible that Manny Pacquiao's quest to be a more orthodox fighter has actually hurt him in some fights. Let me hear from you. Do you feel Pacquiao beats Provodnikov? Do you feel Provodnikov would beat Pacquiao? Do you think that the only thing that matters in boxing is the color green and that this fight is going to take place? Or do you think that Provodnikov is the kind of guy who, quite frankly, is energized by his character, right? By the fact that he knows who's, who his friends are and he's not going to violate that friendship. That gratitude has literally enabled him to be in scenes with some great fighters like Manny Pacquiao and actually learn and improve his own game. Or do you feel he's a mercenary? putting out a PR public story to drive up his asking price simply to make more money when he fights Manny Pacquiao. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online, and I hope you visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.